We are a bit behind schedule, but um, now we come to our last lightning talk for today. It's Omar Akram, and um, he will talk about DeskCon-D secure cross-platform IPC on the network. Please welcome Omar Akram. Okay, so I'll quickly quickly start and make it quick and make sure that we end on time. Uh, my name is Omar Akram. I come from uh, Pakistan. And, uh, well, I come from Pakistan, and uh, I have been part of the uh, core developer team at Crossbar.io. It's a German company that, uh, that kind of uh, sponsors the development of Autobahn WebSocket and WAMP libraries. We also developed the Crossbar uh, WAMP router. Um, recently, we are actually working on developing a data market uh, that is distributed so that no single entity controls the data. Uh, so we are working with different companies uh, as part of that project, which obviously uh, should show something in, in the next few months. Um, I've been part of the Ubuntu community for more than 10 years, and uh, maybe the next month would actually be uh, the 10th year where I become, where when I became the Ubuntu community member officially, and uh, Ubuntu kind of sponsored my trip here as well. And, uh, and finally, I was a QA engineer at Canonical before the famous layoff that happened. Uh, so uh, I'll quickly talk about the WAMP protocol itself. Uh, WAMP was initially defined as a sub-protocol for WebSockets. Uh, the proposition was that because WebSocket itself was end-to-end, -end and then you have, a, you have a server and you have a client, uh, so something that was missing was if, if someone wanted to do remote procedure calls or if someone wanted to route that traffic to other computers, they would have to develop those semantics themselves. Uh, what the WAMP protocol does is it introduces remote procedure calls and publish subscribe on top of WebSockets. And it kind of allows uh, you to be able to write responsive websites with decoupled services. Um, so with feedback from implementers, we actually changed the protocol uh, like in such a way that now any bidirectional uh, reliable transport could be used. So it's not really tied to WebSocket now. Uh, any other transport could be used. Maybe we will be doing uh, transport based on top of Quick uh, that someone was talking today as well. So, and all, obviously zero conf is a technology uh, that's, uh, uh, that's used for service discovery and name resolution on the local network. Uh, and seems like someone disabled multicast on this Wi-Fi network. So I had to uh, create a hotspot on my own device to be able to do stuff. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's due to making sure that the traffic doesn't go crazy uh, and the routers are able to sustain that. Um, so I... The main thing is, this, this is the project that I wanted to talk about. This is called DeskCon. It's your connection to your, uh, it's your computer's connection to different things. Uh, your computer could be a Raspberry Pi. It could be your desktop itself. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, it could be your mobile phone, which is right now, for example, my mobile phone is connected to my computer and it's actually controlling uh, these slides. I'm obviously not pressing keyboard buttons uh, there. Uh, but I'm doing these RPC calls uh, that are, like these procedures are, are exposed by my computer and I'm just pushing them from here. Uh, this is not something like a groundbreaking or this software is not groundbreaking. Obviously, m many people have done that in the past as well. Uh, but I just hacked this around last night so I could do something for this. Um, how it started? Well, as most of the open source projects start, it started as, as something that I was trying to scratch my itch, like I had some use cases at my home. I wanted to control the GPIO pins running on an Ubuntu core device on my home. Uh, I have this home automation project which kind of balances load on, in my home uh, using solar power, for example. In, in the time of uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., I want to be able to run as much as load on that as possible. And uh, so I wrote this thing to be able to 
control these GPIO pins for my mobile phone or my computer for that sense. And obviously, at a later stage, I wanted, I worked in a co-working space, and one of the a problem that came up for me was, in some cases, you forget to dock your desktop screen and you move away, and you have this constant fear that someone might poke into your computer. So what I implemented was I wrote, I exposed an interface from a computer and hooked it to that daemon, and ultimately it was controlled by my uh, mobile phone, so whenever I stepped away from my f desktop, I could actually check my phone as that if I forgot to lock it, and I could actually lock the desktop screen. Uh, obviously, this was working on most Linux distributions. I tested uh, Kubuntu, uh, uh, Ubuntu, and a few others. Well, LightDM was working, GDM, and a few other display managers were working quite fine. Um, and then this thing. Um, so I think most, mostly we know that uh, if you watch Netflix on your mobile phone, when you go to full screen, it automatically raises the brightness of the device. Uh, this is something that was missing for desktops, so I wrote a Chrome extension to be able to do that. Uh, a Chrome extension would send a request to the daemon running on my desktop. It would raise the brightness uh, well, while talking, well, not talking, direct, well, it would actually write those values to the uh, backlight driver uh, on my Linux-based system. So these were some of the use cases that uh, called me to write that thing. Initially, it was all coupled together, but with time, given the use cases, I uh, kind of broke it down into different components so that it could be reused by different people trying to implement different use cases or uh, any scenarios that may come up from them. So at the core of this technology is a router. It's called Crossbar right now. I'm using that router. Uh, you could implement something uh, for discovery. Obviously, I use this Python library, Python 0 Conf, for discovery. So whenever this server starts on a local network, it's discoverable by other devices. And uh, you could hook in different clients. Uh, one client, obviously, in this case, is my mobile phone. Uh, the other um, could be a Raspberry Pi, or it could also be my desktop. Well, there is a client running on my desktop as well. The CLI used to do the pairing. Uh, you run a command on your desktop to generate a key code that then you put in your mobile phone, which actually allows you to pair these devices for security reasons. Um, and obviously, it's cross-platform. The technology that's being used here uh, pretty much runs on all platforms. Uh, it works on Windows, on Linux, on Mac. Uh, the core thing, the thing that's doing all the routing and all the remote procedure calls and the security layer, uh, that is cross-platform. And then the multicast DNS, which I already said, uh, isn't working on this environment, but obviously uh, it's pretty mature enough that Apple itself uses it in most of its devices and uh, many, uh, many uh, Amazon tablets are also using that. Uh, well, in, on Linux we have Avahe, but I, I'm not sure if we are using it that much apart from the printing stack, but... Uh, that is how it is. And, okay, so I came up with this little piece of code that I wrote last night. Uh, for the most part, uh, this is what's exposing uh, the functionality on my desktop. This is talking to you input uh, to send key events. So these are four key events that I uh, uh, assigned to different procedure RPCs, uh, so which I'm calling from here right now obviously. Uh, the, there is one for stopping and starting, and then there is next and previous. This is being controlled. This is, for the most part, sending key events, the, the right arrow key, the left arrow key, well, actually, and the F5 and another key. I don't know which one is that. I don't remember it right now. That's page down, page up, escape, and uh, F5 key. Okay. So this is the simplest code that, I, that is running on my computer, which is exposing this functionality. And here is the overall picture of this thing. Uh, I wanted to do like this architect of this thing. The daemon itself, which is running, uh, uh, which is the router, is running on my desktop. I've called it Descon D, inspired by LexD and SystemD, the naming, obviously. Um, then there is an Android client. There is a Chrome extension, which is called Brightflix, uh, which tries. Uh, to like raise, which obviously monitors Netflix.com, and whenever it goes full screen, it sends a signal to the daemon, which forwards that signal to the other component that's running on my desktop, and that raises the screen brightness. And for my home 
use case I already told about the PyCon. That is also another project that's sub-project of this umbrella project. Uh, PyCon is your Raspberry Pi's connection to things. And right now that component is only uh, being used to control the GPIO pins on that thing. And uh, which is producing quite a lot of saving for me as, as it comes to uh, uh, using that solar system in my home. And so this is snaps obviously since I mostly use Linux based systems on my computer. So much of this is being shipped as snaps. And uh, they are the first, they are first class citizens here. Obviously they, uh, they simplify application del delivery story very much. And due to the fact that snaps are, uh, you can use Snapcraft to build different packages remotely on, on can canonical provided servers, uh, you get free RHF uh, builds that, that are very essential for me to be able to run those, my software on, on the Raspberry Pi because uh, trying to build something on the Raspberry Pi is a, is a resource killer and it also takes quite a few hours in some cases to do that. So uh, this service obviously kind of helps me do that. And obviously they are secure because you uh, input in itself is very uh, dangerous to expose to anyone. Uh, right now, uh, I've been talking to the Ubuntu guys to be uh, able to allow that. They haven't allowed, uh, there isn't an interface for you input to be accessed in a confined snap because uh, you are t talking directly uh, to slash dev slash u input, which, which is very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, open for, uh, key in, in key event, and uh, we, we cannot afford that because a uh, bad actor could do loss of different things that much, most of the people wouldn't really want things to be. And what's next? I, the project obviously is hosted on GitHub. I've been doing active development of this thing for the last few months. Uh, well, I was quite busy for the uh, last two, three months, so the development pace isn't that fast as it used to be a while back ago, but uh, now that uh, I do uh, plan to do most of the changes that I have planned in the next couple of months so that uh, it's shippable, so that many uh, people in the community uh, could also contribute to this project. So I invite anyone, uh, if there is interest, to just clone the projects, fork them, report any bugs if you are able to run them on your systems and I'll happily try to fix those. And any questions or anything, that's, I try to finish it. And you could contact me. Uh, thanks, Omar for your talk, and we still have two and a half minutes, so if there is someone who wants to ask a quick question, just um, raise your hand and I will bring the phone to, oh. microphone to you. Nobody? Okay, cool. then thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there is one. <laughs> there is. The, the router, where, um, where does the router run on? On my PC? Or? Yes, on your PC because that's where these APIs get exposed. So your route, as soon as the router runs on your PC, uh, it sends its name on the local network using multicast DNS so that other computers on the network are able to discover that. Uh, so uh, that enables easy access. Okay, it's for the local network? Then. Yes, it's uh, totally around the local network. In future, there will be support for remote access as well, like the router running on your computer will be able to connect to a remote router provided by me maybe, or you would also be able to host that. And then you could do all these calls over the internet as well. Uh, there, the technology is there, it's just a matter of doing it. So, another one? Yeah, thanks again. Cool. <laughs>